Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors 106 to 104 loss to the Detroit Pistons. Riker, tonight the return of Dwayne Casey to the Toronto Raptors back in Toronto, and he gets the win. He gets the win against his former team. Yeah. Well, I don't know where to necessarily start, but there there probably won't be a lot of positive takeaways from my side of the the perspective here tonight, but maybe you can start the podcast off on a positive tone for anybody that's, you know, feeling a little bit gloom. Yeah, for sure. Well, if we take away positives from this game, you know, aside from the last stretch of minutes, the last few minutes, Kawhi Leonard had a solid night, 26 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, you know, great box score numbers. Pascal Siakam, once again, 17 points, 7 rebounds. You know, he's been on a tear as of late. That continued tonight. You know, no one really had an awful game. OG didn't have the greatest shooting night. DeLon Wright, 0 for 4 from the field. But without CJ and Norm, without our backup wings, Malachi came in, didn't really do too much. But box score-wise, no one really was awful. It wasn't like we can blame the game on one player. And we didn't have Surge tonight. Greg Monroe came in, filled filled the spot pretty well, had 17 points and 9 rebounds. Not the greatest on the defensive end, but 8 for 10 from the field. We all know he's a great offensive player. So the guys, didn't, relatively speaking, didn't have as awful a game as much as this one hurts. But uh, let, just spill your opinion. S- say what you got to say about this game. My opinion is that, uh, well, my opinion is that this fourth quarter was tragic to watch. And I've mm-hmm. made the comment in a past podcast that, it's important for the Raptors, or one of the downsides of the Raptors, is that I think that an issue with the margin that they're defeating teams when they were on their win streak. And it's becoming apparent now that they are not able to close out games. They blew a big lead tonight. I also have made the comment that I'm not impressed by our superstar player. I think that, of course, he needs to come back from his injury, from not playing a season. He needs to find his rhythm in the game again. But tonight was a night that I was very disappointed from um, Kawhi Leonard, especially with the amount of turnovers. I mean, we can't blame the game on him dribbling it off his foot. That's a human error. That happens. But the amount of turnovers that he got, poor decision-making, bad IQ. I expect more from Kawhi Leonard. I also expect more from from Nick Nurse in figuring out how to get these guys who were clearly in a slump and couldn't put the ball in the basket in the fourth quarter and adjusting the rotations. As you said yourself, it didn't seem like anybody had an off night in the box score. So Mm -hmm. he should be able to create a lineup where players are out on the floor that are complementing each other. Another issue that I had was, of course, losing against a Dwayne Casey team. That's not good. This Pistons team is not a fantastic team. And the way that the whole game transpired, they still had a timeout that the Raptors could have used. Your argument is, of course, that it would have made no sense for the Raptors to allow the, the Pistons to set up, um, you know, to have the opportunity to set up an offensive play. But I think just the confusion of the entire Raptors, the the first play that they had where Siakam was lucky enough to get a hand and block the alley-oop attempt, that was a horrible defensive possession. They should have known that a down, or an up screen was coming. So there's just a lot of factors in the fourth quarter that I was really disappointed with. Just critically, um, non-biased, just looking at the game and, and how, it, how it went, I thought the, the Pistons played a fantastic fourth and the, the way that they were mm-hmm. aggressive against Kawhi and the way that they you know bodied up on D and the way that they forced the ball down low, made their shots. I, I think that the, the Pistons deserved it more than the Raptors lost it tonight. Yeah, for sure. The Pistons, we got to give credit to that team. They came out motivated, ready to go. You mentioned it. Attacking the net at will. They just didn't stop going to the rim. And the Toronto Raptors played some solid defense, but they were the Pistons just out-aggressived our big men, our, our guys down low. So, got to give credit where credit is due. You mentioned on the last possession. Just to clarify your argument, you said that not on the possession where, because Dwayne Casey called a timeout. We they threw that lob, then Siakam got the nice block. It was a poor defensive possession for the Raptors, but Siakam came up with a clutch defensive play. And you wanted a timeout from the Raptors on that dead ball. So I think a timeout could have been possible. I think that just just to gather the defense, I, I, I 100% understand what you're saying, and maybe perhaps mm-hmm. critically as just a basketball 
you know, somebody who's intelligent about basketball, it doesn't really make sense to, well, it doesn't make any sense, I guess, to call a timeout and allow them to set it up. But I just think mm-hmm. that based off of how poor the defensive possession one second prior was, right, and yeah. allowing a wide-open alley-oop, there's two seconds left. You know only two things are going to happen. They're going to do an elevator screen and get a guy open who's been hot, but you know that their two main p- players have been their bigs, right? So if they're mm-hmm. not going to get the bigs open, you have to be aware of a slip screen or, or an up screen, and that's exactly what happened. So I, I think it wouldn't have been stupid, in my opinion, yeah. if they had to call and gather and make the make the players understand what is expected of them on defense because they didn't deliver at all. That's fair in context of the game. Still, I think it would have been tough to you know give Dwayne Casey an opportunity to to draw up a play as he, they didn't have any time outs left. So, but that that's up for debate. Anyways, the end of this game it just hurt to watch for people that didn't see. You know, the they as you mentioned, they had a player slip to the net, shoot a floater at the end of the game. It was it was a heartbreaker, but not it couldn't have ended it more perfectly for Dwayne Casey in that sense that it had to be an inbounds play that I'm sure that they practiced in practice he didn't get a chance to draw it up but you know what are your thoughts on just Dwayne Casey coming back and you know I made a whole video on his legacy as a Toronto Raptors you know it hurts as a Raptors fan but nothing could have been more perfect a perfect game for Dwayne Casey absolutely absolutely I it's a way he has a bitter taste in his mouth Mm -hmm. just as I'm sure DeMar DeRozan will when he comes to play in Toronto um the way that everything happened with upper management and being named coach of the year and then being fired i'm sure it came as a surprise excuse me sorry a surprise to Dwayne Casey he wanted to win this game i think he deserved to win this game his coaching in the fourth quarter was was better than Nick Nurse's that's not to say he's going to have a better regular season he's not going to have more playoff success and Mm -hmm. ultimately we're going to always circle back to this anytime that the Raptors have any ebb in the in their in their playing is that they're going to make the playoffs and that's really all that matters. We also have the 76ers are losing games, the 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 Wizards they've completely disappeared. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's not like it's the worst thing in the world for the Raptors to slip in a couple of games that they should win. So, good for Casey. I expect more for the Raptors, but it's not the not the end of the world. Yeah, you mentioned it. The Toronto Raptors are not the Washington Wizards. So, we should really be celebrating, right? Because we're not the Washington Wizards Digest. So, anyways, this game hurts. We're just gonna leave it in the pa- <laughs> we're just gonna leave it in the past. We'll get straight mm-hmm. into the segments tonight. The Kawhi, you do them like that play of the day. <laughs> Don't know if you had anything in mind, but mine has to go to OG's nasty poster jam at the beginning of this game. Okay. Okay. I, I, I for me, if you're, if we're talking about Kawhi, you do them like that. Kawhi, you mm-hmm. win against the Raptors at a buzzer beater. So, uh, of course, this is traditionally towards <laughs> the Raptors team, but I'm thinking, you know, yeah. why? <laughs> why did it have to go down that way? <laughs> cool. Why did this happen to us? Cool. Why did Dwayne Casey <laughs> have to do this to our team? Yeah, for sure. Brand new. That, Brand that new, hopefully only hurt. one one-time occurrence segment. Most definitely. The Raptors need to maintain. They need to keep their own Kawhi You do them like that play. But not all plays can be the Kawhi You do them like that play of the day. And some just make you say, oh, geez. And tonight, I, I said, oh, geez, while watching the game. It was Kyle Lowry. We all know how great he is at taking charges. He, you know, he takes them mostly on guards, wing players, occasionally the big man or two. But tonight, Andre Drummond, he looks like he's 7'2", probably 300 pounds, running down the lane, Kyle Lowry, you know, six foot Kyle Lowry takes a charge on him. Then it looked like a a, a duck, a roadkill getting run over by a truck. That's how that's how that possession looked at. He took a charge on Andre Drummond. Yeah, it definitely made me say, "Oh, geez," watching this game. Perfectly worded. Couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> yeah, I don't Most know if definitely. I would be. I don't know if I would be courageous enough to stand in front of uh, of uh, Andre Drummond with a full head of steam. <laughs> that that must that'd be a very horrifying sight. That for sure. Just seeing a big man like that run at you and you just take it score in the chest. But anyways, finally the infamous Damare Carroll Gold Star Award. And tonight it's you know, I'm giving it to that game winner. You know, just, just that whole last possession. The Raptors get a gold star for that last defensive possession. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. That's perfect perfect gold star, perfect uh cherry on top of the unsatisfying pie tonight um 
<laughs> yeah, the pie of unsatisfaction. The pie of unsatisfaction. But we're gonna have we're gonna be served a couple more slices of this humble pie, this pie of dissatisfaction throughout the season. It's not the end of the world. It could have been better. They could have not let their big lead slip. That's it. It's all water under the bridge now. Most definitely. And you mentioned it. The Celtics have been trashed so far this year. The Wizards have just been god awful. The Sixers are losing games. You know, the Bucks have been fine, but I don't think we're too, too worried about the Bucks, even though they're playing too r- very well. Everything's going to be fine in Raptors land. Get it hashtag in on Twitter or wherever you post on social media. At least we're not the Wizards. And that's my final takeaway from this game. That's it. Good way to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let us know what you guys think about this game. Everything that happened. Dwayne Casey's return. And check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and check out Courtside Connect. We have videos being posted on that almost daily over there, so check that out. You're the best for listening this far. Cheers.